Part 2 Ending of Being Surrounded Part 1 down below in comments. I found a journal my wife kept online, more like an online diary. That only she ever had access to. It wasn't a community or anything like that, apparently. She has it to clear her mind. She went into great detail about everything that happened on her little fun with this guy, including going to his hotel room with him. Something she lied to me about upon first bombshell that she had met up with him we were in the restaurant all night. But after getting into his hotel room she went into the bathroom and started crying, asking herself what she was doing there, etc. Then apparently, they talked for a little bit and she left. I want to be clear about something here. My feelings about all of this wouldn't likely have changed much if she had slept with him. To me it was a betrayal either way, especially because she was still in contact with him for so long, and the horrible untrue things she wrote about me in her little journal, and the fantasy crap she was writing about him. Honestly, I think I could deal with someone having a one-night fling with someone they met in the bar and never seeing them, talking to them again more easily than dealing with a long-term, years, emotional affair ending up with her meeting him in a hotel room, even without anything physical. Back to what happened after the confrontation that was mentioned in the end of part one. The next three hours were emotional, a long discussion about what she wanted, what I wanted, and what was best for the kids, and honestly best for us. I deleted my Facebook account, I get nothing out of it and Facebook is the devil as far as I'm concerned, and promised no more snooping, that I would try very hard to give her the benefit of the doubt. She was going to stay in the guest room and get rid of the other guy. I think one of my biggest personal revelations was the fact that the problems over the last year had very little to actually do with anything I have done and so by me trying to change myself into someone I wasn't was doing way more harm than good. I'm perfectly willing to take responsibility for anything within the marriage that I did that caused issues, however. From the point in time when she went to see the other guy, that is her problem and she needs to fix that bull crap. No amount of anything I do is going to amount to anything if she doesn't get rid of him. Oddly enough, that very night, she came into our room and slept. I was sleeping when she came in. I woke up to find her in our bed. I didn't say anything. I got up, got ready, and went to work. I came home, again didn't say anything, did my thing, worked with the kids, played computer games, just went about my life. She again stayed in our bed that night. I made no attempts to do anything with her physically and kept it like that for some time. Things rapidly started to get better. She started leaving her phone out in the open, leaving her computer up and running. I had no real need, and finally no desire, to go snooping, and it seems that's done a world of good for me. I don't discuss that with her because right now that is my business. She started talking more to me about her thoughts and feelings, even about her issues with him. And I continued to keep my emotions in check, and remain understanding. Our marriage counselor is working well with us, and I'm maintaining my stance personally, that if things don't work out, I'm fine, I don't have to have her in my life to succeed. Now, before someone says, you idiot you can't just not snoop given her track record. Understand this, considering where we were. Both talking to lawyers, ready to end it. I have no reservations whatsoever about going to the lawyer and ending this should something else pop up. And if she's up to no good, something will pop up. That's just the nature of deceitful behavior. Also, I found a great job. It is about an hour and a half drive to get there but I'm looking forward to me time. Going to listen to music. Maybe get XM radio in the car. Just take that three hours daily during the week to enjoy personal time. So, with that great job, if she decides to be stupid, I'm even better positioned to say. Take a hike and move on without her. So, anyways, that's what has been going on. Sorry about the book but that's how I typically write things out. It is nuts how great things have been going the last three weeks, in a way my saying, duck it. About my marriage led me to do the same thing about this particular job interview and out of the blue I actually got the job. I'd say I'm happier than I've been since the bombshell day last year and continuing to make improvements every day. I've also seen major differences in my wife and the way she is interacting with me. It is odd to say but my completely giving up on her seems to be what it took to get her to come back. She knows if something comes up, I'm talking to the lawyer immediately. There are no more chances here. Therefore, with that in mind, it has helped me to get to a better place where I'm ready to live my life without having to rely on whatever she may be doing. This includes two different paths for my life. If she makes the changes, she needs to make to help us get to a stronger trusting marriage. And secondly, she can't let go of him, even as a friend. In which case, I am gone. I have approached this absolutely the wrong way. There is nothing I can do to change myself that is going to fix my marriage. Nothing. As long as my wife was still talking and fixated on another man. Therefore, it is up to her to fix her own behavior something I can't tell her to do. The only way I can force my hand on this is to tell her that I am done. That realization, 
that I was no longer going to try any more. Seems to have been a real wake-up call for her. It is far more refreshing to live my life this way, with these two options always at the ready, than to live in fear. Begging her to do the right thing. I can't fix her. She needs to do that herself. About a month later. Just updating. I'm at work today. It is interesting. I am 90 miles away from home so it is likely I'll spend a couple or three nights a week here. Come home on Wednesday and Friday nights most likely. We are communicating a lot better this last month. Like I said above, and we are talking about the dangers of being this far apart. This is for sure an 18-month long job, at least the first part. After that I'll have some options to move a lot closer to home. I'm still somewhat it hasn't really hit me about the job, after all. I spent more than a year stressing about the fact that my previous job was likely going to end October 1st. And here it was with about one month remaining and I get the job. My wife is being a lot more affectionate and she doesn't seem nearly so stressed out. We have a long ways to go, but things are still getting better. She stays on her Facebook if I come in the room, leaves her phone on the nightstand when she is watching TV downstairs. She's even left her Facebook up during the day while she is at school. I don't look, but then I don't feel the need to look right now either. Honestly, I don't want the ball in my court. She knows if he's not out of the picture then I am out of the picture. Therefore that part she controls. Me trying to control that aspect. Well, that is what got me completely out of control in the first place. I'm taking care of myself right now. She needs to take care of herself. If she can't, she's gone. About three months later, my wife wanted to go on to a trip to Asia to see Vietnam and Bali. With her being in school and my working 90 miles from home, money is extremely tight so we weren't going to be able to afford it but she flat out insisted she was going no matter what. When she got back, I pulled the itinerary out of her bag and saw that she had a 22-hour layover in Toronto. We live in Omaha, on her way to Vietnam. The other man lives in Toronto, and sure enough, she saw him. We went out to dinner and just went to his friend's house to play cards. This is the same guy she went to see two years ago in Arizona. That started all this. When my wife came to me wanting a divorce. Then I found out about him. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe she then tried to justify it while I was in town for a layover and it didn't feel right just not saying hello to my friend and I just lost it. I was livid how can that be right? It is wrong. How could you do this to me? I have spent two years trying to help us get to a better place. To become a better couple. And during that time you have crawled more into your shell, used Facebook even more while hiding it even more from me. And put up this huge emotional wall that I cannot get through. Then she stated that, basically, she had checked out two years ago and didn't really try to fix things. It was right then, along with other realizations over the last couple of months, that I realized, this entire issue has nothing at all to do with me, I should not have been trying to fix myself. I should have put my foot down, made sure I had access to everything of hers and make sure she got rid of this friend of hers. Facebook has destroyed my marriage folks. Oh, my wife brings up all sorts of other excuses, and yeah, I wasn't the perfect husband, I had my issues, but let me tell you right now, when your spouse makes contact with an ex-lover via Facebook, you have got to make sure they stop that contact. My wife is in love with a married man with two kids, and she went to see him two years ago. And how for a second time on December 15th. The worst part, she still defiantly believes she did nothing wrong in visiting him. Never mind that. A. He's a guy that slept with her on a one-night stand 15 years ago and disappeared. B. She lied about the previous visit to go see him and it utterly devastated me for most of the last two years, till recently when I thought things were better. C. She's been in contact with him on Facebook continually for the last two years, despite my insistence that it stopped so we can fix things. D. Now she lied about the layover and went to see him once again, knowing full and well how it devastated us two years ago and started this entire horrible mess. So, we are done, not sure when the divorce will happen. I absolutely believed in her, that things were getting better that we were making great strides. She completely blindsided me again, my fault for trusting her. I look at my two kids and I wonder what I'm supposed to do. I've pulled all but roughly $4,000 out of my investments in order to support her getting through school the last two years. It feels like I have nothing left. I don't want to be in this house by myself. I am working 90 miles away because and we were treating it like a deployment in order to support our family. Now I don't even have a family to support, certainly not in the way our dreams were set up. And the saddest part, through all of this, I am still in love with her. What the hell is wrong with me? How could I be stupid enough to believe this woman? Two years ago, I believed my life was so perfect that we had everything going so wonderfully. When she dropped this on me out of the blue, now she's gone to see this other man a second time. Despite everything, I tried to fix this again, but this time, I told her you need to get rid of him, now. Immediately. No contact, nothing, it's either him or our family. Are you able to break off all ties with him? And she shook her head no and said you won't tell me who I can and can't be friends with. 
What the hell? She is absolutely locked in on a divorce now anyway so that really doesn't even matter now. It seems like my only option is to have her remain in this house with the kids until May. When she is done with school. Because I can't have the kids out where I work because I don't have a house there. I stay out there three nights a week and the kids would not be able to do that. I will be making moves to sell my house. But after that point, still not really sure what I will do. I could conceivably stay at my parents, but they are another further away from my job. My wife says she is willing to give the kids up for nine months out of the year. What kind of mom would just say that? I told her I do not want my children to be taken from me out of the state. I'm going to be removing her name from any accounts I have and circling the wagons to keep her from screwing me over. She says she doesn't mind using the same lawyer. So I'm going to use my lawyer. I just have to find out how that works. I just don't get how a woman goes 1,000 miles to another state to see another man. Then for two years gives the appearance that we are working on the marriage. Then goes and sees the same man again and states I've just been going through the motions the last two years. I checked out before we even went to counseling. How does another person hurt someone so tremendously? She ripped my heart right out. I've gone from fix this mode over to protect myself mode, as my wife screws me and my children and walks from the marriage. I don't know how to recover, I feel like I'm in shock. Eight year marriage, ten years total relationship, and she's thrown it all away because she split her heart and started chasing this other man. All of my goals were wrapped around this house. My family, her family, getting the kids into school next year. They are five and three years old, respectively. I look at my children and I want to cry. They don't deserve this, they deserve better. I am going to be trying to move on, it will be very very hard. I have a great job, I make 60k a year, but my wife is stuck right in my life for five months till we can get rid of this house. Because I can't be here to take care of my kids from 90 miles away from where I work. I stay out there three nights a week and come home on Friday nights, that did give me four nights with my family. But now I don't know how to do this. I hate being in this house, in a way I don't know about my job, everything is depressing trying too hard to find silver lining. She's actually divorcing me, which in a way makes this easier because I'm not the bad guy. She refuses to tell her parents, I'm going to tell them tomorrow. I'm also going to tell them about this other guy. Tonight I talked to this man's wife, apparently, she is aware of who Deanna is. My wife may have been telling the truth, that nothing physical ever happened, but, if you believe his wife, but that doesn't change the fact that my wife is in love with this guy and that she lied about seeing him, twice now. I asked the other man's wife to please have her husband block my wife completely on Facebook and cut off all ties. I said I do not judge your husband, I do not know him, all I know is that my wife has issues and she is infatuated and in love with your husband and then has to stop if there is any hope for her. Not even talking about my marriage, talking about her mental state. I had a very good talk with his wife. I hope it is enough for her to get her husband to leave my wife alone completely on Facebook and never ever talk to her again. This isn't about saving my marriage anymore. I called to inform the wife but apparently. She's aware of it. She said they have attended counseling. I told her your husband may not have feelings for my wife. I do not know, but my wife is very much in love with him. Either way it is not healthy and my wife needs to get over it. Even if that means it isn't with me. Aside from that, y'all hurting tonight. I spent two years thinking this was my problem to fix when in fact she's the one who started the problem. That being said though, I'm still as messed up as I have ever been in my entire life. I did read her private journal where she wrote a bunch of horrific stuff about me, and all these fantasies about him. I think the worst thing about something like this is when you get a bad counselor, s, who do not force the issue with the cheating spouse. Even if she didn't sleep with anyone, she still cheated, trust me on that one. We went to three different counselors and none of them ever hammered the issue. So I'm sure in my wife's mind, she believes she did nothing wrong. And so, what did she do? She did it again. I have to be honest about this, I would much rather she just slept with him the first time two years ago. Get it over with. We move on and get help and fix things. Instead, she faked it all through counseling, she made me believe things were okay. Then went to see him again and said, I've just been going through the motions for two years. What I'm trying to do now is live my life for my children, just do what I have to do for them to make their lives better, and to somehow shield them from the massive amount of pain they are going to have to endure once this marriage does finally fail completely. I really really want anyone who is dealing with an unfaithful spouse to never ever do what I did. Do not listen to counselors who blame you. Do not try to fix the problem yourself, it is not your problem to fix. Certainly, counselors may tell you about things you can work on but understand this one most important fact, if your spouse cheats, be it emotional or physical, it is their responsibility to make amends and bend over backwards to rebuild that trust that they so carelessly destroyed. Don't be like me and spend two years trying to fix an issue that was never yours to fix in the first place. Insist that your spouse give you all passwords, or even give up Facebook. 
or whatever it is. Entirely, insist on a counselor that actually addresses what your spouse did. If your spouse refuses to change, move out, do not stay around. Take the kids with you if you must, but do not put up with the bull crap. I was a fool, don't be like me. She is done, completely. She has checked out of the marriage, says that she did so two years ago and that she was just going through the motions. She never even tried, considering she never gave up contact with the other man. I made huge mistakes in all of this and it is too late now. She is willing to give up the kids for nine months out of the year to me. She isn't interested in the house, says I can keep it, or we can split revenue if I sell it. The house was reappraised for less than what we own, so no real revenue as we refinanced two years ago anyway, because I work 90 miles from home and I'm locked into this job for 18 months. Until March 1st till I can hopefully transfer back closer to home. There is no one to watch my children, so she has to stay in the house for the time being. I pay for most everything, the mortgage, bills, all utilities, her car payment, 500 a month there cable, internet, cell phones. I am trying to be as cordial as I can with her because she is willing to give me the children for the majority of the year. And right now that is my number one priority. Taking care of my kids. My wife and I still talk. I think she'd sleep in the same bed if I wanted to. I am sleeping in my son's room. We talk on the phone every day while I'm at work. She's just simply done with the marriage. This next few months is going to be very difficult. My parents live in the area so I can stay with them. They are attempting to clean their house up. My mom is a bit of a hoarder and they let things get out of hand, but my wife has absolutely no way to make it on her own and she doesn't see it. I know that I should be saying duck you and running like hell but the last two years. Wasted away in trying to fix things. Spent all my time wrapped up in trying to help my wife fulfill her goals that I lost track of all of my goals. I have been on medication for PTSD and massive anxiety. Never have had to use anything like that before. My job is truly good. I make 60k a year military full-time, and my supervisors are supportive and understanding as to what is going on. I know at some point I have to accept that I cannot change this woman, that we are through. I am trying so hard. To make matters worse I work in a single-man armory. I have a couple recruiters that work there too. Thank God for them, very good family men and spiritual like me, but I stay at the building three nights a week to save money as we are so broke from my wife's educational expenses. Currently we are separating out accounts, I am getting her removed from mine and vice versa. We are attempting to get out from under a car that we owe 27000 on but is worth 24000 But even in doing so today she was still looking at brand new cars for eighteen to 20000 instead of looking at good 10-year-old cars for five to 6000 that she can actually afford when she is on her own. I'm at a loss as to what to do. I'm trying to get her to go to counseling on her own. She seems somewhat receptive but she talks about not having the time as she goes to school 8 to 3 every day and does about 25 hours a week transcription work from the home. I'm coming to grips like I said that this marriage is over but I really wish she'd go get some help because I fear 6 months down the road. She'll be so hopeless that she'll contemplate suicide. She is going to be so broke. She has no sense of money whatsoever. I know the responses are going to be that I'm stupid, that I need to end it quick take the concessions she is offering and run. I wish I didn't care about her the way that I do. Understand it has only been a week for me, after two years of believing we could fix things. I feel so broken myself sometimes that I don't know what to do. I feel so horrible for my children. They are going to suffer because of her absolute foolishness and my terrible decision making as to how to handle this. I do still feel very alone and I think my friends and family, although not saying it directly, are thinking good God son get over this and move on already. I have a sister that won't even talk to me now. The love she feels for the OM is unreciprocated. However, it is powerful as hell and it destroyed her feelings for me. The reality of the situation is that she is in love with a ghost. The man screwed her over around 14 years ago and disappeared for six weeks, only reappearing after he was dating another woman, whom he is currently married to. The current version of the OM is not the person she's in love with. She's in love with an idea of where she wishes she would have ended up, with the guy that screwed her over, and that really really hurts me deep inside, that I offer everything I have and still she throws me away for a guy like him. Like I said above, she is offering me the kids for 9 months out of the year but because of my job situation I'm not sure yet what to do. I am working through all my options, about selling the house. But moving closer to my military job wouldn't be the best because I have no support network there. At least here my parents can watch the children. Without a support network the military can conceivably end your career because you'd have no family plan if you were to suddenly need to be deployed. I'm trying to find out if I can get a waiver to move back to my area to be able to keep my house and kids and have my family to support me. But that would be a rare acceptance to policy. And I really do love my current job. Sure, I'm by myself but it allows me to take care of my building at my own pace. 
to work and feel free and not be burdened by jerks around me, but even my job just feels like so much stress now. I know it's the situation with my wife that is causing me to feel this way. I've dealt with it for so long now that I start to wonder if I'll ever be happy again. So, the crap hit the fan when I got home today, apparently something about my wife not hearing anything from the OM for a week and he told her that I had called his wife. My wife is upset about this, she says this divorce issue is just supposed to be between me and her. I told her that I was in every way within my right to contact his wife. That this failed to just be between you and I when she went to visit him the first time and was compounded worse after she went to see him again. I also said that I would not have even thought about contacting her in the last several months because I truly believed things had been getting a lot better. She's of the opinion that I'm acting all nice to her and talking all sorts of nasty crap behind her back, calling her a bee and everything else. I told her that is the furthest thing from the truth, that one of my sisters had called her a bee once. And that I had actually stated don't go there when she did, even on this forum which is anonymous. I don't refer to my wife as a bee I realize others on here will have opinions. I consider my wife to be someone who is very confused about life, unhappy, and looking to escape any way possible without realizing that happiness isn't something you are going to escape Toronto. She proceeded to read me a bunch of posts from that horrible journal she keeps private, wouldn't stop reading them. All sorts of things about her being angry that I looked at porn, or that I had yelled at her when I locked the keys in the pickup. She kept on digital journal of every time she was pissed at me. I already knew about this journal. Over the last five years, I told her that wasn't fair, that it focused on all the bad and didn't recognize any of the good. I said that we'd been over the fact that she had a journal before and that it was a Pandora's box and I really didn't want to hear about it. Not just that, but she was picking and choosing. She left out the posts about this other guy where she talked about her feelings for him. Now she's lying in bed completely depressed. I guess I shouldn't really care. She's made up her mind that we are done but here she is still in my house. One foot in front of the other, I really do need to maintain. As long as I can continue to do that, and let time slowly pass by. We will get to May, we can sell the house or do something different, and then we will go on from there. I wish I wasn't working 90 miles from home during the week. I have to figure out how to sell this house, how to deal with being 90 minutes away from both her and my family. At my job I mean, how to get out from under her upside-down car loan and such. We are probably stuck in this house together for the next six months or so. Well, that's the plus on working so far from home, I guess. My wife is not right in the head, I don't mean that as an insult or anything. She has always been borderline agoraphobic, anxiety and depression issues, but I never complained. I worked with her on those issues. I loved her through them, because while she may be a small percentage messed up the vast majority was a joy to live with. That and she dealt with my quirks, my immature anger my negative reaction to stupid drivers. That sort of thing. I have to forget about the wonderful woman I knew and married. She doesn't exist. When I remember all the things I just typed in that last paragraph, it makes it a little easier to make movements towards this divorce. I'm sure I'll still waffle, but again, I can't fix her. And she doesn't believe she did anything wrong. And again, I have to remember just how cruel she's been. Weeks later, she came back downstairs tonight, after hiding out and crying in her office, and comes in all short with me about how to give the kids medication and then I said, I'll read the ducking label if you want to act like that and she tossed the medicine down and said, you are cruel, immature, and selfish. I started laughing and said really, really, you took a trip to Asia over Christmas, left me with the kids, and visited another man in another country that you are in love with. Oh, but I'm selfish, that makes sense. Then she ran back upstairs, then right back downstairs, grabbed a knife, locked herself in the room, screaming that no one loves her and wailing back and forth. I kept telling her I never stopped loving you. Don't do anything you'll regret. Think of the little ones and after about 15 minutes I went in and got the knife off the floor. She was laying in the fetal position. Apparently, her boy toy from Toronto isn't talking to her anymore. And she blames me for calling his wife. I hope he never talks to her again, even though I know with that womanizing prick that is always temporary. So, my mistakes tonight got drawn into her petty arguments and made them worse. Big mistake, but I'm tired. So her excuse, I should have just come home and slept. Too bad she doesn't have the maturity to actually approach a discussion with an adult tendency. Instead of blowing up about the VD test, why not just say calmly you've probably got something natural. I haven't slept with anyone and be cool and collected about it. Instead of you accuse me of sleeping with someone, I bet you slept with some girl and got herpes. And now I have to get tested, which is what she said. And back and forth, normally I don't get drawn in but she called me an abusive guy and I called her a selfish bee I knew better. 180, calm, collected, go out if I have to. A month later, it appears that she wants to take her time moving out, 
which is not going to happen. I wanted to go home today to talk to her about this but I have a cold that got so bad that I didn't sleep but two hours last night. I've learned now that if I don't get sleep, I cannot be around her. Because I'm irrational, and it ends up being two irrational people trying to work on real issues, which is sort of like trying to knock down a brick wall with water balloons. It is not going to happen. I plan to stay here tonight, get sleep. Oh and my parents are watching the kids and the kids are doing awesome. They are so happy right now. I do not blame their stress on myself or my wife, but they know things are not going well for us and it isn't the best for them. I will have to be here all weekend because we have drill, but tomorrow night one of my soldiers is coming out to stay the night here. He says it is because he doesn't want to drive Friday morning but I think it is more likely because he is one of my more trusted guys and he knows what I'm going through. He is a former Marine and his ex-wife once pointed a gun at his head when he lived in California years ago. So, I'm looking forward to spending some time with him. He's in a much better marriage now. The woman he is now with is a great person. Gives me a lot of hope. I talked to my counselor today for about an hour and a half and it went very very well. We discussed some of what I've been talking about with close family in the last week. That nothing I could have ever done was ever going to change this situation. That my wife was destined to run because it is her pattern. She is unhappy with life, her depression. Anxiety get the best of her. And she has to blame someone something and move on in order to find happiness. My problem is I keep thinking about what may or may not happen to her. And that's not my problem any longer. I'm recognizing that one of the reasons this is so hard on me is because I feel responsible even now for what is about to happen to her. I wish the best for her, that she finds a job making good money and makes it on her own. But I know that in all reality, she's used to living a certain way, on a certain amount of money and her illusions are not going to match up well with what will become her reality. I have to let go of those thoughts though and understand that I am not responsible for her any longer. In my marriage I never minded being a caretaker and a giver. So much so that I've gone well beyond what a rational person should ever do. Destroying a lot of myself in the process. As I look over this writing, rehashing, repeating in some areas, but I hope all of you understand that I'm getting through this process. That each day is truly getting a little better. There are times I wish I didn't love her that I could hate her, but then I realize that being able to love someone even through such a crappy situation is what really defines the good in a person. Not trying to toot my own horn, I just need to continue to build on what is positive in myself. And don't worry, even though I'm not where I need to be, I also recognize that you can love someone without having to enable them. You can love someone while setting boundaries up. Three months later, March, she moves out into her own apartment, files for divorce. July, birth control on my health care insurance. Again, she got some in December also, and stated, it is to control my cycle and migraines and I can't be seeing anyone right now. It is just best for me to be alone, don't worry about that. August, she has a boyfriend, has had him for some time, and had him in her apartment while my children were there, then refuses to talk to me about it. I'm not posting this for any reason other than to discuss my rights regarding my wife suddenly having this boyfriend around my children, a guy that she barely knows if you believe what she says. I asked her please do not bring this person around our children, with you and him alone, because that is very confusing for them and her reply. You will not tell me what to do, he has a five-year-old boy and I want him to get to know our kids and be friends. I'm very angry, extremely hurt, because of a variety of reasons. She wasn't able to keep things together enough to be a respectable mom to one family. Now she is wanting to drag another man and his kid into the mix and confuse my children even worse. We are still married, we are not divorced, so of course this hurts me like hell. But her response, I haven't cared about your feelings in a long time very spiteful. But again, I digress, this is about the kids. Am I wrong to feel this way? Every parenting book, website, and video I have read states the same thing. You do not introduce your children to a prospective partner in the dating stage. And you absolutely do not get them together with the other person's children. Reason being they are already traumatized by the divorce, and you will confuse them to start with by bringing another man into the mix. Then that man's child. And what if that doesn't work out, suddenly they lose another potential source of affection and experience even more detachment disorders. I can't explain this to my wife at all. She just claims I'm trying to control her. I stated that all I'm doing is asking her to please read up on the issue and don't involve our children with a strange man. Absolutely no concession on this. Just the same claim from her that I'm trying to control her or you are using the children to control me. I'm at a loss. Every time I think she's hurt me as much as she can, be it using her maiden name at her college graduation after inviting me and not telling me, attempting to sell her wedding ring the day she tells me that she wants a divorce, not helping one bit to get our dream house ready to sell, because I can't afford it anymore. 
she finds new ways to hurt me. Am I out of line not wanting some other man involved with my children a mere two months into the full separation? As divorces go, I'm getting through this very well. She wants nothing from me. She stayed it all the time last year. Even as we were trying to fix things, you make all the money, I feel like I'm just in a prison here. I don't contribute and it belittles me as a person what the hell. I would tell her all the time how much she meant to me, and that her taking care of the kids meant everything. That I couldn't do it alone. It fell in with every positive trait I had being twisted around into something negative. I make all the money to support my family. You see what she says about that. I would call in the evening because I missed her and wanted to hear her voice and tell her I loved her. He's checking in on me because he thinks I'm screwing some other guy. I could never win. So, yeah, divorce is filed. Right now it is being kicked back and forth for very minor issues. The parenting plan gives me the kids for nine months out of the year. But I fully suspect she'll leave the state or not fulfill her obligations as a mother. She left them with me and my parents for three months after she moved out to begin with. And never even attempted to contact them, except when I pushed her to. She's just a very mentally messed up person, and I got sucked right into it. My comment, what do you guys think about the ending? OP finally detached and is heading towards a better direction. And the partner, she's just going straight into her fog.